coming in. We're a mess coming in. We are God's masterpiece. We are God's masterpiece. We are love. We are love. Six. Yeah, let's see. Ephesians 1 6. How many things have we got? Mm-hmm. Get your Bible? Somebody got your Bible. Okay, okay, look right up there. You got your Bible. Turn this over, flip it over. She cool little rope. Mr. Spice. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Well, house clean. <laughs> Praise God. I will read to you from Ephesians. Let's pray before we get started. Let's stand up. Let's all stand up. Come on, stand up. Get up from the Lord. Father, we thank you right now for yes, your Lord. presence. Yes. yes, Father. Thank you. You're always present, watching over us. Yes. You are Yahweh Shabbat. The yes. Lord is ever present with us. We thank you. Thank you, Thank you for manifesting your presence tonight. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We know you're on the inside of us, so you're already here. We thank you. We yes. recognize you're here right yes. now. We thank you. We bless you right now. Lord Jesus, thank you. And we welcome you. And Lord, if you don't choose to show up personally, we thank you that you've given us the authority in your name. Yes. To act on your behalf. Yes. In Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for a revelation of that to everybody, Father. That if that you don't have to walk up there, that we have got the authority, you've delegated it to us in your name. That's right. To act on your behalf. I say that act on his behalf. Yes. Come on, we gotta we gotta hold that. Act on his behalf. The authority is in his name. Maybe it's been delegated to us. If the devil shows up, yes, you don't beg Jesus to show up to cast it out. Yes. yes. Say, I, I, you know, Jesus, where are you, Jesus? All right, you're not here. You gave me your name, your authority. Yes. To, you delegated this yes. to me. Yes. So I take authority over to Jesus. Yes. Jesus. Amen. Yes. Thank you for that. Holy Amen. Spirit, thank you. Yes. Thank, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome the angels to work. Come yes. work. Yes. Do what you do. Yes. Whatever the, the need is, then God, one of you to side, take care of it. Jesus. Yes. Amen. So we open your hearts up for the ministry yes. of angels. Yes. To come minister to you. Need healing. Jesus. Need deliverance, need finances. Yes. Those are basically what most people need. Is it? Uh, that there's a there's a supply for you. Say so there's a supply for me. There's a supply for me. There's a supply for me. Yes. Amen. Your words are very important. Your words are very words important. Words are very important. Amen. Yes. With your intention. Intention is everything. Amen. So thank Amen. you, Father, for, thank good, you, Father. for a good time together. Thank you for our eyes. In Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. 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 Be seated. Hallelujah. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, what you say No, we all have that. Mm-hmm. Jesus given all of us that 
Praise God. Amen. Everybody amen. say, hey, yeah. Amen. amen. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, amen. I'll get off real quick so I can't do that. Praise God. But, but that's a simple revelation, that, but if you get a hold to it, amen. you think about Jesus, if Jesus was there yes. in, in, his, in his physicality, yes. Jesus would heal. Yes, amen. That's right. He's all in, the, in, the, in most of the churches, I wish Jesus was around. If only Jesus were here. Yes. But the, the fact is, Jesus, Jesus gave us, listen, gave us authority. Amen. Amen. As I said, gave us, it's, no one can take his authority. He delegated his authority. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. he calls us to be, that's what we are, ambassadors. That was part of yes. that confession. If that was an ambassador, represent. 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 Amen. Amen. Is that your job to, to uh, your job is to represent. It's his job to cause it to, his name to be honored. Amen. 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 He, he values his name. Amen. 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 So in the name of Jesus, you can literally say, I stand here. Yeah, I, the Holy Spirit's on the inside of him. Yes. Right? Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. Whoa, he's on the inside of him. Uh, the Holy Spirit's on the inside of him. The Father's seated in heaven. Yes. Amen. And Jesus comes and goes. That's right. <clears throat> when I say that, you know, sometimes Jesus will show up. I can see, see Jesus show up. Sometimes he doesn't show up. If he doesn't show up, you get all disheartened and downcast. No, you have to take authority, to take uh, the knowledge of the word that says that he has given his name to us. Amen. He's given his name. He's yeah. let us use his, use his name. So if he's if he's not there. Because he is, a, he is a physical being, you know. If he's not there, he said, you you represent me. That's right. And in my, that's what's all about. In my name, yeah. in my name, you yeah. represent me. Amen. It's not, the name of Jesus is not a magic potion thing, you know. You, you, you tack it over into something like some kind of abracadabra. That's right. They just, just understand that the, the authority that's been given unto Jesus yes. is given a name above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every, 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 every day will submit things in heaven, things on earth, and things under the earth. That's right. Every day. Now, you're, you've been privileged, we were talking about that a little bit, you've been privileged to, to, to use that, that, that's how you use it, to exercise that name. Yes, yes. Amen. Regardless of what you feel like. Regardless of what your uh, your emotional condition at that moment, the name stands. Amen. Your your emotions do not your emotions your fear your anxiety do not have the power to stop the authority of yes. Almighty God yes. given to Jesus. Amen. Amen. You need to understand that. Amen. If you want to feel something before you. His power is not based on your feelings. Amen. 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 Come on. It's part of our nervous system that has to be retried. It's for dear good mind. Amen. That's all to get on. So Ephesians, Ephesians, uh, one sixteen. We're teaching up Paul's prayers to the to the to the church. Amen. Amen. They're not just to the Ephesians. He gave it to the Ephesians. Now listen. This is a prayer. If you will pray this, if you want to know a prayer to pray for yourself. Or for somebody else that you want, you would like them to have the revelation of who Jesus is, the revelation of God and His love. But first of all, you need it for yourself. Amen. Amen. Yes. <clears throat> like on the airplanes, I, I, I've been flown many times. They always give you go through the instructions. You know what's happening with the mask? If, if the cabin decompresses, the mask will drop down. That's oxygen mask. What do you do? They tell you, put it on first. Even if you got a little child with you, you put it on first. Because if you don't have it on first and you passed out from lack of oxygen, life's in oxygen, then you can't help anybody else. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. So the, the, the Word of God says this. It says, and this is the commandment. Love the Lord your God. Love Yahweh Elohim. The Lord your God. With all what? All your heart, your mind, your heart. Your interior, yes. your mind, your soul, your strength, right? Right, yes. He says, it, that, that sounds like a hard thing to do. To love him, this is old covenant, though. Mm -hmm. 
and love your neighbor all right, as yourself. Amen. All right, now that really gets hard there. It's hard enough to love God, but you love your neighbor, you just you probably want to you know, do something bad to because they're annoying you. But you, you take it out, you gotta take it over back. As you as you love yourself. If you can't come to the place through the grace of God, say the grace of God. Grace of God. It's not something you, you figure out, this is something God shows you. If you cannot learn to accept yourself like God accepts you. Amen. And love yourself because he loves you. Yes. True. I know people tell you that all the time. It's hard for you to believe it, but it's true. Yes. God is love. You can't help but do anything but love. He true. is love. Amen. He didn't say God has love. He says God is love. Amen. Listen to me. You're here for a purpose. You're here for a reason. You wouldn't be here. The Lord's got a word for you. Amen. Amen. The, word, the Lord's got a word for you. It doesn't have to be a personal prophecy. It can't, might, might be, but it's, uh, there's a word for you. That's right. That basically, listen, basically this is the problem with every human being is, is, they, is they don't love themselves. That's right. Now, I, I'm not accusing you. If you love yourself, it's like it. Good. You, we're all in progress. We're working in progress. Now, when I say love yourself, I'm not talking about a selfish, narcissistic, you know, the whole world revolves around me. That's right. It's just, it's just, it's just, it's, it's, it's overcoming by the grace of God. I always say by the grace, is it take grace? Overcoming that, that sense of shame. Yes, yes. And where does shame come from? Somewhere in your lifetime. As a human being, as, even as a child, mm -hmm. something happened. You did something or something was done to you and shame, the, the, the force of shame was released upon you. Mm -hmm. It's a trauma. A trauma. You can have physical trauma. You can have mental trauma. You can have spiritual trauma. Trauma means you got, got the crack. Never mind. You can't, no kids in there, right? I'd be watch out. Try to do it, but it, the trauma means you you had something from the outside assault you. That's right. Against your will. Mm-hmm. And many times you, I mean, a hundred, probably a hundred percent, you you did nothing to deserve that trauma. That's right. But the lie of the enemy. That's right. Is always well, you know, that would never happen to you if you had done this. If you'd only been this, if you had done this, if you had done this, you know, that, 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 that trip plays in your head. Shame, so shame. Then, then, and then you take shame on and, you, and it produces guilt. You, you deal with guilt, guilt. And if, it, if I hadn't done this, you, know, you start beating yourself up. You forget all about the thing that came from the outside that assaulted you, that came against you. It could be, it could be uh, you, you were molested as a child, it could be, it's, it could be you, you were in a car wreck. It wasn't your fault. They would traumatize your body. You understand trauma, when, it, when, when trauma enters in, it enters into your nervous system and it's, it, it doesn't just go away. Time does not heal all wounds. That's right, come on. God heals all Amen. wounds. Amen. That's right. Amen. Now, I ain't trying to be religious, go religious on you, but I'm just telling you, time don't heal nothing. You may, That's right. Yeah, it, it, That's right. time doesn't heal anything. That's right. Come on. It doesn't say by his, by his time we are healed. It's just by his stripes. He took bruise. He took stripes. He took trauma upon his. Don't you think it's traumatic to be, first of all, uh, betrayed by somebody who's, who's hung out with you for three and a half years, you know, carried your money back around, betrayed, taken, mocked, beat, tied to a post and whipped. Not like the Jews. You know, the Jews were regulated to, to 39 stripes. Mm -hmm. They weren't Jews whipping them. It was Romans. Right, Romans, Roman, they whipped till they killed. If they ordered it. They, if they could kill you at the whipping post, they didn't have to bother crucifying you. So he was literally shredded for you. 
Surrender. Then he threw the stinking cross on his back and had him haul it to, to, to his place, to God called him. The place of the skull. Amen. You need to understand that. Now Jesus took all that. Why did he do that? It says in Isaiah, he was bruised for our iniquities. Whatever, whatever it was, you were traumatized with and brought an iniquity into your, into your flesh, into your soul, into your very being. Listen to it. And that, that's, it says Jesus, the reason he went to the cross is this. He went to, to break justice. People all about you. Jesus went to the cross to die for our sins. Jesus did die for our sins, but he did what he died for it was to break justice mm -hmm. to the earth. Yes. That's right. Both he he came to break justice for the things you've done to others, and he break, he came to break justice to the the things that others have done to you. Let's don't make this a one sided thing. Amen. Jesus, all Jesus, you, you dirty, rotten sinner. Jesus came to save you. Yeah, he did come to save you, but he also came to save that, that other dirty, rotten sinner that abused you. That's right. And you, well, you didn't deserve it. You, so you got resentment built up in you because of somebody else that does it. Why did God let that happen? I tell you what, God, he, he mm -hmm. just go. I don't, he took care of it. Amen. 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 Now, accepting that is a process. I don't expect anybody to hear what I've said just now and walk out of here and just talk. That'd be great, you know. <laughs> totally free of that. But at least you can begin a process of, of, of renewing your mind. But take, go to the New Testament. Just pray this prayer. Come on. I, I, we'll go pray this Pray this prayer. Did it let the whole not you got to do nothing. Just pray the prayer. Let God do it. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You know He's real. This is not a, a fairy tale. This is not an act we're putting on. This is not a sail pitch. This is a this is God. Oh God, I He He really did this stuff for you. That's right. It's not up to you to do it. It's up to you to receive it. Amen. Amen. Now, I'll admit that's one of the hardest things in the world to do, to receive. You know, it's hard to receive. Amen. It's sometimes, you, you know, Chris, we get to a place where we give, we give, we give, we give. We turn around and somebody tries to give you something back. And you, you, you yeah. say, oh, no, no, I don't deserve it. Uh, no, I don't, no, no, don't do that. And what you do is that, that, is, a, that, is, a, that is one of the first signs if you somebody that knows, I know this stuff. Is a sign that there's an orphan spirit mm -hmm. in operation in you, because right. you don't think you deserve anything. That's right. Come on, you don't think you deserve. Most this is the fact about most Christians. The reason that they don't ever receive their healing, I'm talking church folks. That's right. Is is they don't they don't think they deserve it. <laughs> huh? They don't think they deserve it. Right. How many times? How many times you ever, you but you you ask God, are you talking to God about your physical healing, mm -hmm. and all this crap comes up in your head? Yep. yep. Well, you should have gone to church for. Mm -hmm. Well, you should have done this. Everything in your history comes up. Yep. Amen. Right. And, and I'm telling you, your healing, your healing is not based on, on what you've done or not done. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That, you got to get over that. Huh? Your healing is no more than your salvation. No more than you being born from above, being born again. Amen. Nothing, you ain't got nothing to do with it. Amen. Except receive what's been done for you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's a hard thing for people because people got pride. That's right. Come on. We wanted. We want to be able to say we did it. I did it my, with Frank Sinatra. Yeah. I did it my way. Well, he did it his way. I don't know where he's at right now, but yeah. I don't want to do it my way. It don't work out good when I do it my way. That's right. That's right. I don't know about you. Amen. Does it work out good? Huh? It worked work out for a little bit, but I did it real good. Temporary. Uh, temporary. This is what's called grace. Amen. Yes. 
Hey, Ben, we went through the faith message. We learned how to believe we received, but what do we believe we received? We need to believe we receive grace. Amen. Amen. Ephesians says that you're before you're delivered, you're saved, you're so loved, you're healed, you're right. Come on. set free by grace yes. through yes. faith. Yes. And that not of yourself yes. is a gift of God. Amen. Yes. Amen. Tell people all the time in Galatians, you know, it says, Paul said this. He says, I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, so he identified with the crucifixion of Christ. Nevertheless, I live. It's the parent. I'm still alive. I'm still walking around. Mm -hmm. But but the life that I now live, now you put, you go look it up. Galatians. The life that I now live. So I'm living a, a different life every day than I lived before. Amen. Is that the life I live now? That's right. I'm living by the faith oh. of the Son of God. Oh. See, and that, there's, and there's a difference. Some translations translate, translate in, mm -hmm. but the correct translation is of. That's right. That's a little slight little thing, but it's all, it means everything in the world. Amen. Because if you live by faith in the Son of God, then you're having to exercise effort, constant effort, mm -hmm. effort. See, that's what we're messed up in the faith message. We, we got legalistic. I got under more bondage being in, in the Word of Faith camp than I did before I got in there for the Methodist. Why? You think it's... Yeah, there was a lot of great stuff. I love all of you. I was born to my brother Hank. I, but I'll tell you what, this is the deal. It's not about your faith doing anything. It's about his faith doing something. <clears throat> You, I know what, you were saved, you were saved, or if you're born again, when did your salvation, when was it accomplished? How, when was it gone? Huh, before the foundation of the earth. Mm -hmm. It was, it, it was, an, it was an act, enacted, literally enacted at the cross over 2,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. right. Where were you, buddy? In the heart. Yeah. You was in you was in the heart of God, but you did you weren't physically on this planet. You ain't right. you ain't even been born to sin. You can't sin unless you got a body. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, so all this took place before you ever showed up. So whose faith was in operation to get your sins forgiven? Yours or Jesus's? Jesus. Jesus had to go to the cross. Do you realize he had to go to the cross in faith? That's right. That's right. Oh, he's God. Yeah. You know, he went as a man. Look at Philippians. Look at Philippians. He laid aside his Godhead. He did not think it was a, it was a, a robbery, an act of robbery to, to, to maintain his God status. <clears throat> he took, look, you have to understand it. Jesus came down here and he, he laid aside his God stuff. Yes. That's right. Yes. Literally. Literally. Amen. Yep. And everything, so he, would, he became totally dependent on his father. Amen. That's an example right there. Yes. We become totally dependent. That doesn't mean you don't get off your butt and work. And don't be, hey, come on, Dad, I'm not talking about that. We're talking about spiritually. We're talking about dependence in your heart upon something. Yes. Yes. You've you got a daddy. Well, you know what, Jesus, with his faith, he's, he's the one who used his faith. He said, I'm going, you listen, you think, you think Jesus was so assured that God was going to raise him from the dead? Why was he in the garden praying so much that he bled? Amen. <clears throat> saying, saying, Daddy, if there's any other way to do this, come on, when do you ever say that? When do you ever say, is there any way else we can do this? If, unless you got a little, a little apprehension. Yeah. I'm not going to say doubt because, you know, I think doubt is sin. Yeah. And Jesus was tempted in all ways we were yet without sin. So evidently he, he, he may have been tempted with doubt, but he didn't doubt. That's right. <clears throat> now that's where he's got one up on us. Because mm -hmm. yeah. when we're tempted with doubt, we go with the doubt. Yeah. So all you spiritual people watching. Amen. Are you out there? 
So Jesus went with, he, he went to the cross, man. You talk about somebody that got some faith. That's right. You let somebody beat you, beat you to a pulp, I'm sorry, up to a pulp, nail you to a cross, leave you up there, and you can't, and you can't even die. Do you understand Jesus didn't have to have any sin in him? And he couldn't die? Because the wages of sin are, yeah. if you ain't got no sin, there's no, yeah. he could have hung up there to this day. But he took, he said, he received, he took our sins. Mm -hmm. right. He said he had to open his heart up and take, you know what I'm That takes faith. To, to take our sins, to take our transgressions, take every transgression done against you or, or what you did to somebody, take them all. And I don't know how he did it, if one, but, but if one man, Adam, could bring it all into the earth, one, the last man, Jesus, could take it out. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You talk about Superman. This man, this is Jesus, is Superman. Yes, he is. Amen. Yes, he is. God, I'm about something. <laughs> you remember Superman? I used to watch Superman when I was a kid. There was Superman. He he he, he would go fly so fast around the world. He turned the world backwards, and, and some time would go backwards or something. Yes, Christ. That's pretty good. Cool. But Jesus did better than that. Amen. <laughs> 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 we can go back to the foundations of the universe and fix everything. Sure. So you hate, what if I'm born? It ain't got nothing to do with you. Amen. That's right. God chose to love you. That's right. Thank you, Lord. He chose to love you. I don't see how he can do that. He don't know me like I do. <laughs> you eat you. He made you. He knows you. It's so cool. It's the faith of the I'm now Paul said now I'm living by the faith of the Son of God. Amen. I'm living I can live now, I can have a relationship with, with Almighty God. Amen. And Paul was a he, he was a Pharisee of Pharisees. He was he was he he had openly declared to Philippians that he was he was as righteous as you can get. It for that you know, tell me before he got he met Jesus. It's pretty day bold, isn't it? He said, in righteousness, he does it. You gotta read Philip. He said, in righteousness, no one excel me. No, I ain't no doubt about it. He, 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 he tried hard, man. Then he goes on to say, after I met Jesus and all that stuff, was like dumb. Right. Dumb. And see, we got this is the whole, this is the deal. All right, let me read. So Paul said, he said, do not, if I didn't make my point, uh, just, I'll do it eventually. <coughs> do not, this is Paul prayer. This is a prayer you pray. You need to write this down. Ephesians 1, start at 16. You can read it down. You'll catch the prayer. Or I said, he, I said, Paul says, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. What did he pray? What was he praying for you? Praying for the church in Ephesus. He said, that, that, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, the Father may give you, may give you. Now, now listen, there's a, there's a give again, there's a grace again. Listen to me. Try it. Come on. That God may give you. Oh, you gotta, why, why don't you have, why don't you have? Because you don't ask. Isn't that what right. the Bible said? That's yeah. not so he said, I, we do the asking, and he does the showing up. Amen. And, and I can, I can, listen, you, you'll be trying, if you pray this, if you pray, you know, I, I would take it, keep, I'd keep praying. This is what it's not what one time prayer. You keep praying. And watch stuff start shifting. Yes. Amen. He said, I pray <coughs> that the Father will give you the spirit of you know, what? Wisdom and revelation. And revelation. Wisdom and revelation. Wisdom, wisdom is taking knowledge and knowing what to do with it. That's right. Revelation is, is what, what it says. It's a revealing or something that's unknown. Amen. In the book of Revelation, the, the apocalypse, 
which has been associated with the end of the world, yeah. associated with everything negative. The word means revelation. Mm -hmm. The book is called The Revelation of Jesus Christ. That's right. The book is not about the end times. Right. It's not about all this stuff, disaster. It's about the revelation of Jesus Christ. It is a revelation that if, I, if all this stuff is even going to happen in the future or right now or already happened, I'm not going to argue where you are theologically, eschatologically. I'll tell you, the, 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 the whole point of the thing is in the midst of all this garbage, Jesus is in the middle of it with you. Amen. And nothing can conquer him. Amen. Amen. Right. Come on. Come on. Amen. Amen. <laughs> It's not a book about the bad stuff that's going to happen or going to set up. I don't, you know, you, you can't do nothing about it anyway. That's right. But what you can do is hook up with the guy, yeah. the man, yes. <laughs> that's overcome and trials, that sits on the throne, yeah. and all the angels bow down and say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God. So what's what we prayed about? Show us this, Lord. Give us a spirit of revelation. Amen. Reveal Jesus to us. Yeah. Reveal Jesus to us. That's right. That's right. You ain't got to see him with your eyes. That's right. I've seen him often. You, you trust me? I've seen him. But I, I believed him before I ever saw him. That's Amen. Right. That's right. The spirit of wisdom and revelation. No, but be surprised if you pray this prayer and Jesus don't show up. <laughs> in the knowledge of him. In the knowledge of what? In the knowledge of him. What is that? What is that word? Put your glass up. To make sure I know what I'm talking about. Epigenosco. Listen, it means the knowledge which is the precise and correct knowledge. You know stuff that ain't right. How many of you know you know stuff that ain't right? That's right. Huh? Get off there. Hmm. I, I know some stuff, buddy. I know some stuff. I mean, I, well, you do know some stuff, but you ain't right. Amen. <laughs> this is the precise and correct knowledge. That's right. Amen. There's a lot of people who think they know stuff about Jesus. Mm -hmm. But they don't know. That's right. Information is not reformation. <laughs> That's right. Jesus has got a way, listen, he's got a way when he's around you. He rubs off on you. Amen. He transforms you. That's why Paul was usually encouraging you. You know, you, you need to read your Bible. Jesus is the word. Amen. You can you can you can have a, a supernatural encounter with the Bible in the Bible. It's just like a portal. The Bible's a portal. Into right. the realm of the spirit. That's Amen. Right. You're not reading it for you not read it for information. That's right. Somebody said I heard somebody say this word. You don't read the Bible for information, you read it for inspiration. Yeah. What inspires you? What encourages you? What yeah. lets you it's a prophetic book. Yeah. It might take it too long. Uh, it, it, it uplifts you. Amen. I don't care. I, I've got. I've got. I got an old man Bible in the bathroom. It's that thick. It's a. It's the ultra giant print. I finally found one. Of them. Ultra. Because I, I, I. I've been. I spent my whole life just in front of a computer. You know, not playing games. Either. So I can. And, and I don't. And if I put a pair of glasses in the bathroom, somebody's gonna move them. <laughs> So I said, I'll fix this. I'll get the biggest Bible. Because I ain't going to use an iPad. I can make the letters bigger with it. But when I don't have an iPad in the bathroom, I can reach that big Bible. But it's, it's about that thing. I ain't exactly. It, it's about that thing. And I can reach for it, and I can open it up, and I can still squint, and I can read it. And I'll just, I'll just open it up. I'll try it. i just open the rascal up. 
and read something. It might be from the Old Testament, some obscure something. And by God, I can meet God in the bathroom. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Amen. 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 <laughs> this stuff is it's like a virus. It gets off on you if you, if, you, if, you, if you become susceptible. If you haven't developed your spiritual immune system enough to repel any, any, any of this Holy Ghost virus to right. spread about. You've developed your, your religious immune system where you're immune from God. Mm -hmm. Immune from Him talking to you and speaking to you and healing you and all this. Get vaccinated. Amen. <laughs> you know what I mean. Take your most building yourself up a party, you must only fight in the Spirit. That's right. Or the, not having the eyes of your heart to enlighten. Now what's it going to do? It's going to enlighten. It's going to turn on light in your, in your, in your spirit. Because yeah. yeah. that's what your heart is, is your spirit. I got <laughs> it, 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 That you might know. What do you, what do you, all right, first thing we start talking about, what's the first thing he wants you to know? What the hope to which he's called you. Amen. He's called you, to, he, he's called, God has called you to a hope. Amen. That's right. Yes, yes. A confident expectation of the manifest presence of God. Yes, yes. He's called you to the glory, his, yes. his glory. Yeah. He's Amen. called you, it says right there, he's called you what are, that he has called you to, what, he says it right there, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance? In the saints. In the saints. Now that's hard for you, us to identify a lot of times. We think, if you've been raised in a Catholic background, you think a saint, you know, to qualify to be a saint in the Catholic Church, you have to have so many miracles performed. They have to confirm these miracles performed. And whatever they count, and then the Pope canonizes you and declares you're a saint. Mm -hmm. But according to the Word of God, <laughs> as soon as you receive Christ, receive Jesus, you are separated. Amen. Right. Right. And that means you're a saint. That's right. Paul, you look at the brothers of Paul, he always says, I'll speak to the church and so and so, to all the saints. Mm -hmm. He wasn't talking about Saint Anthony and Saint uh, whatever say. I'm not making these people, if you go back and read the history of these people that they canonized as saints, they were you know what they were? They were just real Christians. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. They were so unusual. It's been so unusual the last 2,000 years in the church for somebody to really operate like they're supposed to. They were the dead. They, they made them something special. That's right. And you pray to them. Mm -hmm. We're we going to wake, we go wake uh, Marina. She prayed for somebody at Walmart. And he got better. And we're going we go to have him a uh, coronation, saint coronation. <laughs> Same I didn't put it down. She's already saint. Amen. You're That's a saint. Right. That's You're right. a saint. That's right. You separate. It, the word saint means, Haggai, he got something with Haggai. It means to, to be separated. Well, I read you that prophecy last week. God said, I'll separate you from the world. I'll separate you. It, it is not based on, it is not based on. No, no, I'm not trying to discourage you to be a, a good person. That's right. Doing the right thing. That's right. But how's that work out anyway? Well, no, I'm not encouraging you to, to go out and just intentionally do stuff. But I'll tell you right now, God is, you don't realize in the spirit realm, go up, whoo, up, look down, look at you, in the spirit. You've got a mark on you. Amen. It's not the mark of the beast. Amen. He sealed you with the, he sealed you with the Holy Spirit. That's right. I mean, that word sealed, I mean, it, it, literally, if you look at the word, it means he put a stamp on you. I mean, you can, you can go, you can, if we, if we got that really good meeting, you know, this, this prime number one, you know, they got a stamp on you. You prime. Well, you know what? You can leave that stuff out in the sun long enough, it'll rot and be stinky. That's right. right. But still, as far as, as far as the government's concerned, it's prime. Amen. Mm -hmm. So some of y'all stink. 
Now, I'm not talking about physically, but you still got to stay up on it. Amen. Amen. Don't get offended at me. I stay too. Sometimes I stay. You guys don't want it. Sometimes I just stay. You're a stinker. Huh? But you still got the sail on you. Amen. That means you have to put the sail on you as responsible. That's right. That's right. Tell them what the resurrection is. Takes Amen. a bunch of rotted meat and raises it up. I'm getting off. Praise God. I, was, I put this up here for a reason. You know, and I'll get to it. <coughs> what are the riches of his glory? Listen to that. We'll just stay right there. What does that mean? There's, he says there are riches. He says we are, the, we are his inheritance. We're, we're the riches of his glory. Or in us. His riches of his glory is in us. All right, let me take you one back. I, I, I will. I'll, I'll cut it real quick. I know you got your time. All right. Let me see you. John, let me turn it off. You, you're familiar with this? Yeah. Which I just want to make it real simple, okay? Simple as I can do. He said, uh, this is Jesus talking to me. John 14 says, He said, Do not let your heart be troubled. Now that's right there. That's a commandment of Jesus. Right there. You ain't doing it right, my big trouble. Do not let your heart be troubled. He said, Believe in God. Trust in, rely upon. That's what belief means. Just trust it. In God, talk about the Father, Yahweh. He said, and Believe also in me. Amen. This is what we get to. He said, In my Father's house, Father's house, are many dwelling places. Now, what, what, what do you think? Traditionally, you said, we you know, when we die, we all get to heaven. You know, we're going to have a, you know, a mansion in heaven. Because this King James says mansion. Don't call me. It says mansion. What are you left for? You got a pants on this? If I get him to laugh, man, I'm telling the Holy Ghost is in this house. Praise the Lord. You, know, you, think, you look at the, you, I'm not trying to burst your bubble about your, your match in heaven. And then, and then you get real religious, you know. Well, I don't want that, a match in heaven. I just give you a little a cabin. In the corner of glory there. You, you full of pride, religious jerk. You dead, you And then you talking about that. That's right. He said, in my father's house, Okios, or household. Let's say, uh, I looked at, I saw a speck thing about the Roth, you know the Rothschild is supposed to be the richest family in, in the world. We all know they're on the they eat babies and all that stuff. But they got, their, their, value, their family value is in the trillions. Yeah. Not billions, but trillions. They have got, let me just think, I don't want to, you know, y'all let me, you just, you let me slide. You know, I'm an old man, you know, I, I can't remember the precise name. I think they've got like 21, and they showed pictures of, a, of these houses they got. <laughs> they look like the palace of Versailles. You know? It's in, in their house, in their household, the Rothschild household. They have the, all these mansions. They were trying to get a party with you. He's, Jesus is talking about, in my father's household, there are many dwelling places. Now look, look at it. Let's get your whiteboard. Look, let's just say, if you can do it, this right here is, is the father's, father's, who's the father? Yahweh. Father Yahweh. This is his house. Household. Household, yeah. What's that? That means, that's his holdings. That's what he, he said, in my father's household, there are many dwelling places. There's Ivy, there's Chrissy, is Chris coming out here? She's been teaching Sunday school. Yeah. Oh, here it is. Dick, Dick's over here. Here's Dick. I'm going to keep it Dick. Okay. All right, there's Gloria. There's Pamela. There's Stevie. Here's Brickett. He's in there. He might put you right here. He's not happy there, right? <laughs> I couldn't hear that song. 
I'm trying to be good. Okay, no, I'll tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to pretend I'm gone. And we'll put you right there. There you go. <laughs> All right, that's what he did. Mm-hmm. You know, some of you in here, I'd put you there. Oh, I'm a bad man. <laughs> I'm saved, praise God. Amen. But Jesus came. He did come to save this righteous, but the right sinner. That's right. Come on. Look, sorry, uh, so listen, just, I'll get this in your head. Never let it be. You got to get further brother revelation. I ain't saying that. But this is a, this is what Jesus said. He said, "My Father's house, house of, there are many dwelling places." Mm-hmm. We're all in Him. We're in Him, mm-hmm. yes. and He's enough. Did Jesus say it? He said, uh-huh. yep. "He said, I'll be. He said, I'll be in you, and you'll be in me. Amen. I'll be in the Father, and the Father's in me." That's right. So then, here's God's dwelling. His dwelling place is a mansion in heaven. His dwelling place is a mansion here on earth. That's right. Amen. Yes. Amen. Paul said this. He said this. He said, talking about the, the Corinthians were doing all kind of flaky stuff. He said, don't you know that you're the temple of the Holy Spirit? That's right. Amen. Amen. He would put them down. He said, don't get, wake up. Sin is always a sin is always a result of misidentity. Amen. You don't act like who you are. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Most of you do know you're human, don't you? Mm-hmm. So I, I won't. I won't probably won't see y'all out there running up that tree looking for nuts, <laughs> huh? <laughs> now, if you identify as a squirrel, you, you might. <laughs> If I see you out there looking up, climbing up a tree, that's a, that's a cypress tree, so you ain't going to find any nuts you eat them. That's right. But do you understand? It's, your identity prevents you from doing certain things. That's right. Yeah. Yes. That's right. Yes. Yes. Where do you get your identity from? Your daddy. That's right. <laughs> I'm talking about your physical, your, your physical father. Amen. I'm talking about my father's house. Where do you get a clue to what, what Daddy says? You get it here, in the, in the book, in the book you wrote. Are y'all out there? Amen. Amen. What you identify? The, the, the whole deal, the whole deal right there, if you, you know, or know this stuff, I'm just telling you. The whole deal, this is the most prophetic generation that's ever been in existence. But, it, but it's, a, it's mostly in a negative thing. Mm-hmm. You'll be prophesied, young people, especially, are being prophesied to every day. You think a prophecy has to come from somebody that's in the ministry that stands up here? A prophecy is something that is a word that changes your life. That's right. right. That's right. And I'll tell you, there are words being spoken right now that change people's lives. Yeah, that's right. And I'm not talking about pretty good. That's, that's right. right. That's right. If you te- if you're told to question your gender. And don't you understand? I have no problem. Now, how do I say this when I get into trouble? I, I'm, I'm kind of like God. I'm really a, a lot like God. Because you are okay. I don't really want to judge people on, on their problems. Right. Amen. I'm not saying I agree with them. But I'm sure if you looked at me, you could probably see a lot of stuff you wouldn't agree about me. You understand? You understand? Mm-hmm. But I hope you love me. Amen. Because without your love, I'm never going to change. Sure. And I'm talking about agape love. I'm mm-hmm. talking about ooey gooey. Sure. Huggy woogie. You don't have to like me. Just love me. Do you understand? Okay. God kind of love you. I got by. Yes. You've been accepted. You've been yes, no scripture is. He says you've been made faces says you've been you have been made made accepted in in, in. the beloved. Amen. Amen. So you're in Christ, he's the beloved. Yes. You tell you your preference for rejection. We we talk rejection or 
spirit, poverty spirit, whatever. It's all wasted out. Y'all listen. I'm going to finish. And this is what God's come to do. Jesus said, let me skip out of it. Let me give you just a little more good news. Can you stand and hand any more good news? Amen. Now, see, this is a problem with this. Using a big iPad to cut your more stuff in. How many of you trust me enough to know? <laughs> I'm glad you tell it to you. You remember what Jesus said, Where is it at? It says, But Jesus said, I'll not leave you orphans. It's in here. It's right up in here if I get it. Do you understand the scripture? Yeah. Jesus said, I'll not leave you orphans. I will not leave you orphans. This is the last thing I'll talk to you about. I will not leave you orphans. That's right. Huh? I will not leave you orphans. Now listen to what I think. This is, what, this is a revelation. I thought, you know, I'll, and this, I taught it a couple of weeks ago. I said, I thought Jesus, they're so close to Jesus, he's, he's telling them he's, he's getting ready to go away. He's got to die. Y'all listen? Yeah. Get ready to die. That he's, they're getting freaked out. So he says, listen, I'm not going to leave you orphans. I'm, I'm not going to leave you on your own. But he, he goes and says to the pastor, he says, I'm going to give you another saint. Sure. Mm -hmm. Not, and that's where people get all messed up. The work there, and there might be someone who will take care of you, deliver you. It's more than what that was. Listen, but this was uh, this is art. This is my my view on it. You can question you want to. Jesus is saying, listen. He said, listen. I'm not going to leave you an orphan. He's not saying it because I'm going to I'm going to leave you physically that you're going to become orphans and you're scared of being orphans. You already are an orphan. I'm not going to leave you an orphan. Right. Y'all didn't get that, did you? Yeah. Amen. You was already an orphan. That's right. You did it wasn't it wasn't when Jesus came all of a sudden you're not an orphan anymore and he's leaving now, you're gonna become an orphan again. And he's trying to reassure you. He said, I will not leave you an orphan. The whole human race is an orphan. That's right. Right. Verse 18? Yeah. A four, chapter of uh, 14? Yes. Thank you. See, this what's this? I'm about to talk to you around a record Bible story. I will not leave you. And to say that's right, listen to as orphan. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't think so. He said, I will not leave. Jesus is making a promise. He said, I'm not going to leave anyone an orphan. Sure. Now, unless you've been an orphan, you wouldn't know. But the fact is, a whole human race is an orphan. They lost. I'm not saying they were abandoned by their Father God. But they, they, that's the way they sent they, the shame, the guilt that came on them at the fall. They, they took on an orphan spirit. Y'all out there? Mm -hmm. yeah. They toiled. They had to live by the toil. Gee, we got Yahweh said, told him, see, he would, you know, what we call the curse. He was not punishing them. He said, this is just the way it is. Because you, you, you've got the outside of this tree of life that I set there before. You got it on the tree of knowledge of getting evil. He said, you're going to toil. You're going to live by the sweat of your brow. You're going to work hard and bring forth thistles. Do you understand this? He said, say, it's not God. We always think it's God just, he's cursing them. No, they were already cursed. Their disobedience brought a curse on them. They did it. God didn't do it to them. They did it to themselves. Are you out right there? Yeah. And Jesus is saying, listen, don't. they're all freaked out because this is the first taste of any kind of relationship with God that, that humanity's had, really. When Jesus came onto the earth and had these disciples and he hung out with them for three and a half years, they have a taste of what it's like to be in fellowship with God. This is more than just the priest going in once a year into the Holy of Holies. And, it said the Shekinah, or even prophets been caught up into heavenly visions. That only happened. That didn't happen every damn day. I don't know what people think about prophets that they just live continually in this realm of just It just happens every once in a while. 
But here they'd been living with the man, eating yeah. with him. They had fellowship with God. Mm -hmm. They got a taste of what it's like, what it's supposed to be like. Yeah. And they, he said, he, they don't understand. He, he said, I got to go to the cross. I've got to die. But it's better for you than I do. Because if I can't, I can't send the Holy Spirit back to live in you. That's right. right. I'm not going to leave you in the condition you're in. That's right. Do that, you understand the difference when he said, I'm not very smart. So I don't, do you understand? He didn't say, I'm, going, I'm not going to leave. Like I'll tell him, I'm not going to leave you. You know, it means I'm going away, not coming back. I'm not saying that. I'm not going to leave you in the state you're in. Right. Amen. Right. I'm going to go to the cross. I'm going to, I'm going to buy you back. Yes. Amen. 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 I'm going to pay your debt. Amen. You. And I'm going to pay the debt to those that are indebted to you. So you ain't got no reason to hate them anymore. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's why you love your enemies. Yes. Because in the eyes of God, their debt, whatever they did to you, has been paid for. Yeah. Amen. Wow. Isn't it wild? Praise God. That's cool. If you look at it in the spirit, I can't have an enemy. Why do you have an enemy? They did something to you. Jesus took care of what they did to you. Amen. Amen. Wow. That's why Paul said to the Corinthians, he said, he said, no longer, he said, I no longer see any person after the flesh. Right. Wow. Praise God. If I look at you, if, I, you, if you've done something, but if you did something, but if you ever did something, but I'm talking to natural. Every time I look at you, I'm gonna go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ain't that right? Mm-hmm. Right. Huh? <laughs> yeah, but if I look at if I look at him, I won't pick on you. Who can pick on you? I don't you can take it. Yeah. If I look at him and I see and I've got in my mind what Jesus did for me and for him, Amen. then I look at him and I say, you know what? Whatever he owed me, Jesus has paid for. Yes. Yeah. He and he's not responsible to pay me back. That's right. I don't, I'm not waiting for him to, him to, he may never change or where you're talking. But, but God's going to get that debt that, that's owed me back to me somehow. That's right. It may come through something else, somebody else, more likely will. That's right. Are y'all out there? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's the same thing when they're looking at you. you you've done, we've all done stuff to each other. Right. If you have a, if you spent over five minutes with somebody, yeah. you you probably done something that offended them, uh -huh. or think that they owe you, or you, or you think they owe you something, or whatever. You know, are y'all getting it? Yeah. It's just simple. You learn how to live this way, which yeah, I don't know. That's hard. Right. <laughs> it's right. been a whole change, life changes life. And I'm not saying, uh, don't get me, uh, y'all know me. I ain't got there yet. I'm getting there. Yep, we're going to get there. I believe we all get there. Amen. 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 Praise God. Okay. I didn't go for 10 minutes old. Let's, let's have to read. Why do we do this every Sunday? It is some kind of a religious thing. No, it's not a religious thing. <coughs> what do we do? What other things do we do every Sunday? We, we worship God yeah. cor corporately. Not that we don't worship Him you know, at home. Do we do that? No, we do that. We, it's here. You sure, we sure go take up an offering because I'm a preacher. Amen. We do that every Sunday. That's not your religious ritual. Uh, let's give you the opportunity. Thank you, sir. Give you the opportunity to, to um, give. We, we, we share the word. Amen. You know why we do this? Well, Jesus said, do it. He said, do it as often as you will. And so I will. It. So I want to do it. I'm sure you do too. Amen. Because you, when you do this, you do this in remember. I'm moving around too much. What are you doing? It? This is intentionally. You do it to remember what Jesus has done. 
Humanity has a real case of amnesia. If you if you, it don't take it don't take but about two weeks to forget something. You ever notice the longer you stay away from something that you thought you really loved at one time, the longer you stay away from it, the less. Yeah. I don't know about that. Absence makes the heart. If absence makes the heart grow fonder, then I, I've got a lot of people that used to come to church here that really love me. Praise God. <laughs> Because they're absent. <laughs> <laughs> you can't laugh at you got to cry. Very good. <clears throat> That's why you have to discipline. I say, this is not lead, this is not for righteousness' sake, but it will lead to righteousness. You put yourself under the law. He said, "I'll go as we do for them." The curse of the law. Yeah, you've been reading the curse. That's why you can, you can let the law come into your life. That's right. Because it can't kill you anymore. Amen. What am I saying now? You put yourself, you see an area of your life. What's the law for? The law's for the lawless. That's right. That's right. If you've got an area of lawlessness or iniquity in your life. That's right. Come on. You put yourself under the law, what God says about it. And then you come up and it'll bring you into such conviction, you know, say, I can't help it, I, I need help. Mm -hmm. uh, he said, that's right where I was waiting for. Well, no. yeah. Because until you really realize you need help, you can't get no help. That's right. That's right. You got that? Yeah. So you put yourself under the law. Yeah, y'all probably misunderstand what I said about it. I'm not saying you gotta go back and talk to the Jewish Mosaic law, but I tell you, it's a discipline. Amen. Amen. If you're if you're overweight, you need to, the things that cause you to be overweight, you need to put yourself under a law. And stop. No more sugar. Now, the, how long is it going to last? Until grace takes over. Yeah, yeah, yeah you'll keep, you keep going back to the sugar bowl until grace takes over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but grace will take over. Amen. Amen. Right. Do, it, Amen. do it for you what you can't do. Do it for yourself. Amen. But until you realize you can't do it for yourself, you'll never receive grace. Amen. Right. Amen. As long as anything you think you can do, you don't need God. That's right. That's good stuff, man. That's, that's, a, that's a good word right there. That, that is a good word. You write that down. <laughs> that is a good word. I mean, that's it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a truth. It's a word. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a truth. truth. Is that the Bible? <laughs> so, so we're going to do. We're going to do this. Yeah. yeah, it is empowering. Grace is empowering. Grace is not God overlooking your stuff. Like, you know, I'm just going to look like that didn't happen. It's a, he said, "No, I see what's happening. I'm going to do something about it." And it's not punishing you. It's delivering you. Amen. Amen. Now, there's plenty of other preachers who can beat you on the head with much stuff, so I don't. I feel safe in my job. <laughs> make you feel good about God. There's plenty of people out there that, that their job is, is to make you feel like God hates you. That's right. So I don't feel like I've, I've stepped out of bounds by being uh, unusual mm -hmm. to tell you God loves you. And then he... And he's for you, he's not against you. Oh, you just let them slimy sinners slip in your foot. God's good, isn't it? Amen. Amen. So the Lord said, The Lord is good. The Lord is good. His mercy is yours forever. His mercy is yours forever. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. His mercy is yours forever. His mercy is yours forever. 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 Let's say it about yourself. The Lord's good to me. The Lord's Lord good to me. me. His mercy. His mercy. Towards me. Towards me. It endures forever. It endures forever. Do you, do you believe it? I believe it. Yes. 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 I believe it. You can be challenged. I'll prophesy over you right now. So you walk out the door. Let you stick in your Bible. You're going to do something goofy. That's right. <laughs> I'm not speaking it over you, I just know. It's going to happen to me. But thank God for grace. Amen. 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 Amen
You know, everybody said, man, that guy's really is a prophet. <laughs> well, I pray for the grace. Listen, we pray for the grace of God that don't know how. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Amen? That's right. That the goodness of God will overtake you. Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. Goodness and mercy will overtake you. Amen. Run you down. Chase you down. Yes. Amen. That's every spot you think. God chased it down and married him every day. Amen. <laughs> Chase you down and overcome. I believe it. Amen. Amen. So, so on the night the Lord was betrayed, Jesus was betrayed. He said, listen, this is my body. He said, take it easy. He said, this is my body. And I'm giving it for you. I'm giving it for you. He said, I want you to take it and eat it. Get it inside of you. Amen. That you are the say, I am the body of Christ. I am the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. Remember it's individual, but you're the body of Christ. So if God's gonna do anything on the earth, guess who he's gonna use? You say he's going to use me. me. Regardless of my condition. Regardless of my condition. Amen. Amen. Isn't that something? Yes. Amen. So people say, well, that's just, he's just talking about a few, that's just special people. No. Y'all are all special. Amen. Amen. All that's right. Amen. Y'all all ride the special bus. That's right. <laughs> Y'all you know what the special bus is? Like? <laughs> Short bus. Short it's all right. The Lord God's using me. I don't care if I'm riding short bus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So, 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 you're not disqualified. Amen. That's right. Right. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Ah! All right, take it in. <laughs> you work for mm. Thank you, Father. There's bound to be people that watch this and think, these people are all here. <laughs> Hmm. I think blood covered it, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Thank you, what you did. Thank you, Lord. You know, after, after that eating, you took the cup and said, this is the blood. This is my blood. The blood of the new cup. This is the new cup in my blood. Yes. Amen. You Amen. Cover, do you deal with I'm God, me and Daddy make it with you. That's right there. I can remember I did about it. Thank you. This is a new deal. Yeah. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die to release it. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So we we honor the King. Hey, let me still read. I'll put. He just put here. What is he coming? He said, "I'll put my laws in your mind, and I'll write them on your heart." He said, I will be their God. Say, my God. My, my God. God. And they shall be my people. That's right. They, they, people. people. they shall not teach everyone their fellow citizens. We're all citizens of the kingdom of God. That's right. <clears throat> and everyone his brother saying, know the Lord. Yes. That's right. Why? For all, 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 all. say all, all, will know the Lord. From the greatest to the smallest. That's right. Huh? He said, for one. Why, why would God know us? Know us? Because he, he will be merciful to our iniquities. Amen. And what's he going say? And he will remember their sin, my sins, no more. Amen. That's the new covenant. Do you Amen. understand it? That's what he said. I'm going to die and make this thing happen. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to come back from the dead and make sure it happens. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. To the king. Amen. 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 Jesus. Amen. 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 I pray God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Anybody, if anyone, listen, if anyone needs prayer after the service, just stay up here, just come up. God, kids, try to be not rowdy and stuff. If there's people up here getting prayed. And we'll pray. We don't have, I don't have a prayer line anymore unless the Lord leads me to. Yeah. But that doesn't mean we won't pray for you. It, it, either me or Pamela or, or Henry or Ivan or Stomp over there. He'll, he ain't stomp no more. Come on. Hey! Yeah. He's got a leg. <laughs> yeah. 
Thank you, dude. You got a leg up on me now. Nice guy. I'm not, if you need prayer, it's all cash. I people get that idea I'm against but praying with them. I'm not I come to grow I'll come in agreement with you. Amen. And if you can't, you know, if you ain't got that much, we'll get somebody else. I'll like get them to come in agreement with me. Amen. Amen. And God will do what he said to do. Amen. He will. Amen. Thank you, Father. Praise God. So listen. So that's I just want to make that clear at the end of the service. You say you say that. So Lord, we, we thank you. Father, I thank you right now that you yes. bless, you you bless them. Lord, I release blessing. Yes, yes Father. You give us the power of blessing. Yes, Father. As you wrap your arms around them, Father. Yes, I receive it, Father. Yes. Thank you for oh. that grace of bows towards them, Father. Yes, Father. That that shalom peace of bows towards them, Father. Thank you, yes, Father. It's your presence in them yes. increases. Lord, yes, Father. Possible, Lord, expand yes. their metron for your yes. presence. Father. Yes, Father. And I bless them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Time we are healed. It's just by his stripes. He took bruise. He took stripes. He took trauma upon his. Don't you think it's traumatic to be, first of all, uh, betrayed by somebody who's, who's hung out with you for three and a half years, you know, carried your money back around? Betrayed, taken. Mock, be tied to a post and whipped. Not like the Jews. You know, the Jews were regulated to, to 39 stripes. Mm -hmm. They weren't Jews whipping them. It was Romans. Right, Romans. Romans they, they whipped till they killed. If they, ordered, they, if they could kill you at the whipping post, they didn't have to bother crucifying you. So he was literally shredded for you. Shredded. Then he, then he threw the stinking cross on his back and had him haul it to, to, the, to his place, to God call him. The place of the skull. Amen. You need to understand that. Now Jesus took all that. Why did he do that? It says in Isaiah, he was bruised for our iniquities. Whatever, whatever it was, you were traumatized with it brought an iniquity into your into your flesh, into your soul, into your very being. Listen to it. And that, that's, it says Jesus, the reason he went to the cross is this. He went to, to break justice. People all about you know, Jesus went to the cross to die for our sins. Jesus did die for our sins. But he did, what he died for it was to break justice mm -hmm. to the earth. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. Both he, he came to bring justice for the things you've done to others, and he, bring, he came to bring justice to the to, to things that others have done to you. Let's don't make this a one-sided thing. Amen. That's right. That's right. Jesus, oh, you, you dirty, rotten sinner. Jesus came to save you. Yeah, he did come to save you, but he also came to save that, that other dirty, rotten sinner that abused you. Right. And you, well, you didn't deserve it. You, so you've got resentment built up in you because of somebody else that does it. Why did God let that happen? I tell you what, God, he, he mm -hmm. just go. I don't, he took care of it. Amen. 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 Now, accepting that is a process. I don't expect anybody to hear what I've said just now and walk out of here just talk. I, That'd be great, you know. <laughs> totally free of that. But at least you can begin a process of, of, of renewing your mind. But take, go to the New Testament. Just pray this prayer. Come on. I, I will go pray this. Pray this prayer. Then let the whole... Not, you ain't got to do nothing. Just pray the prayer. And let God do it. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. You know, He's real. This is not a, a fairy tale. This is not an act we're putting on. This is not a sale pitch. This is a different, this is God, oh God, I'm I. He, he really did this stuff for you. That's right. It's not up to you to do it. It's up to you to receive it. Amen. Now I'll admit that's one of the hardest things in the world to do, to receive. You know, it's hard to receive. Amen. It's, sometimes, you, you know, 
Christian, we get to what we give, we give, we give, we give. You turn around and somebody tries to give you something back, and you 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 say, oh no, huh? I don't deserve it. Uh, no, I don't know. No, don't do that. And what you do is that that is a, that is a, that is one of the first signs. If you somebody that knows, I know this stuff is a sign that, that there's an orphan spirit mm -hmm. in operation in you. Because you don't think you deserve anything. That's right. Come on. You don't think you deserve. Most this is the fact about most Christians. The reason that they don't ever receive their healing. I'm talking church folks. That's right. Is is they don't they don't think they deserve it. Huh? They don't think they deserve it. Right. How many times how many times you ever, you but you you ask God? Are you talking to God about your physical healing mm. and all this crap comes up in your head? Yep. yep. Well, you should have gone to church for it. Mm -hmm. Well, you should have done this. Everything in your history comes up. Yep. Amen. Right. And, and I'm telling you, your healing, your healing is not based on, on what you've done or not done. Amen. Yeah. That, you got to get over that. Huh? Your healing is no more than your Amen. salvation, no more than you being born from above, being born again. Amen. It, nothing, you ain't got nothing to do with it. Amen. Except receive what's been done for you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Now that's a hard thing for people because people got pride. That's right. Come on. We wanted we want to be able to say we did it. I did it my was Frank Sinatra. Yeah. I did it my way. It my well, way. he did it his way. I don't know where he's at right now, but yep. Yeah. I don't want to do it my way. It don't work out good when I do it my way. That's right. That's right. I don't know about you. Amen. Does it work out good? Huh? It worked work out for a little bit, but I did it real good. Temporary. Uh, temporary. This is what's called grace. Amen. Hey, Ben, we went through the faith message. We learned how to believe we receive, but what do we believe we receive? We need to believe we receive grace. Amen. Amen. Ephesians says that you're before you're delivered, you're saved, you're so loved, you're healed, you're right. Come on. set free by grace. Yes. Through yes. faith. Yes. And that not of yourself yes. is a gift of God. Amen. Yes. Amen. Tell people all the time in Galatians, you know, it says Paul said this. He says, I've been crucified with Christ. Never nevertheless, so he identified with the crucifixion of Christ. Nevertheless. I live. It's the parent. I'm still alive. Still walking around. Mm -hmm. But but the life that I now live, now you put, you go look it up, Galatians. The life that I now live. So I'm living a, a different life evidently than I lived before. Amen. Is that the life I live Amen. now? Right. I'm living by the faith oh. of the Son of God. Oh. See, and there, there's, there's a difference. Some translations translate, translate in, mm -hmm. but the correct translation is of. That's right. That's a little slight little thing, but you, it's all, it means everything in the world. Amen. Because if you're living by faith in the Son of God, then you're having to exercise effort, constant effort, mm -hmm. effort. That's what we're messed up in the faith message. We, we got legalistic. Mm -hmm. I got under more bondage being in, in the Word of Faith camp than I did it. Before I got in there for the Methodist, what you think it's yeah, there was a lot of great stuff. I love all of you. I was born named my brother Hagen. But I'll tell you what, this is the deal. It's not about your faith doing anything, it's about his faith doing something. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you, I know what, you were saved, you were saved, or if you're born again. When did your salvation, when was it accomplished? How, when was it accomplished? Huh, before the foundation of the earth. Mm -hmm. It was, it, it was, an, it was an act, enacted, literally enacted at the cross over 2,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. right. Where were you, buddy? In the heart. Yeah. You was, in, you was in the heart of God, but you didn't, You weren't physically on this planet. You ain't right. even, even been born to see it. You can't see it unless you got a body. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, so all this took place before you ever showed up. So whose faith was in operation to get your sins forgiven? Yours or Jesus's? Jesus. 
Jesus had to go to the cross. Do you realize he had to go to the cross in faith? That's right. That's right. Oh, he's God. You know, he went as a man. Look at Philippians. Look at Philippians. He laid aside his Godhead. He did not think it was a it was a, a robbery, an act of robbery to to, to maintain his God status. <clears throat> He took, look, you have to understand it. Jesus came down here and he, he laid aside his God stuff. Yes. That's right. Yes. Literally. Literally. Amen. Yep. And everything, so he, would, he became totally dependent on his Father. Amen. That's an example right there. Yes. We become totally dependent. That doesn't mean you don't get off your butt work and don't be, hey, come on, I'm not talking about that. We're talking about spiritually, we're talking about. Dependence in your heart upon something. Yes. Yes. You're you got a daddy. Yes. Amen. Amen. Well, you know what? Jesus with his faith, he's he's the one who used his faith. He said, I'm going. You listen, you think you think Jesus was so assured that God was going to raise him from the dead. Why was he in the garden praying so much that he bled? Amen. <laughs> saying, saying, Daddy, if there's any other way to do this, come on, when do you ever say that? When do you ever say, is there any way else we can do this? Yeah. If, unless you got a little, a little apprehension. Yeah. I'm not going to say doubt because, you know, I think doubt says. And Jesus was tempted in all ways we were, yet without sin. So evidently, he, he, he may have been tempted with doubt, but he didn't doubt. That's right. <clears throat> now, that's where he's got one up on us. Because mm -hmm. yeah. we when we're tempted with doubt, we go with the doubt. Yeah. So all you spiritual people watching. Amen. Amen. Are you out there? Yeah. So Jesus went with, he, he went to the cross, man. You talk about somebody who got some faith. That's right. You let somebody beat you, beat you to a pulp, I'm sorry, up to a pulp, nail you to a cross, leave you up there, and you can't, and you can't even die. Do you understand Jesus didn't have, to have any sin in him? And he couldn't die? Because the wages of sin are, yeah. if you ain't got no sin, there's no, yeah. he could have hung up there to this day. Mm -hmm. That's right. Come on. But he took, he said he received, he took our sins. Mm -hmm. He said he had to open his heart up and take, you know said that takes faith, to, to take our sins, to take our transgressions. Take every transgression done against you or, or what you did to somebody, take them all. And I don't know how he did it, if one, but, but if one man, Adam, could bring it all into the earth, one, the last man, Jesus, could take it out. Yeah. Amen. 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 You talk about Superman. This man, this, he's, Jesus is a Superman. Yes, he is. Yeah, yes, he is. God, I'm about to stop. <laughs> You're a Superman. I used to watch Superman when I was a kid. They were super ready. He, he, he would go fly so fast around the world, he turned the world backwards and, and some time would go backwards to somebody else across. That's pretty cool. Well, Jesus did better than that. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> we can go back to the foundations of the universe and fix everything. Sure. So we, he, what if I bought it? It ain't got nothing to do with you. Amen. That's right. God chose to love you. He chose to love me. I don't see how he can do that. He don't know me like I do. <laughs> you eat it. He made me. He told you. That's so cool. It's the faith of the I'm down, Paul said, now I'm living by the faith of the Son of God. Amen. I'm living, I can live now. I can have a relationship with, with Almighty God. Amen. And Paul was a he, he was a Pharisee of Pharisees. He was he was he he openly declares in Philippians that he was he was as righteous as you can. It, for that, you know, tell me before he got he met Jesus. It's pretty dang bold, isn't it? He said, in righteousness, he does it. You gotta read Philippians. He said, in righteousness no one excelled me. No, I ain't no doubt about it. He, 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 he tried hard, man. 
then he got so sad talking about Jesus and all that stuff. It's like dumb. Dumb. And see, we got this is the whole, this is the deal. All right, let me read. So Paul said, he said, do not, if I didn't make my point, I'll just, I y'all do it, my bitches. <coughs> do not, this is Paul prayer, this is a prayer you pray. You need to write this down. Ephesians 1, start at 16, you can read it down, you'll catch the prayer. I said, he, I said, Paul says, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. What did he pray? What was he praying for you? Praying for the church in Ephesus. He said that, that, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, the Father may give you, may give you. Now, he, now listen, that's it, that's it, give again, that's it, grace again. Listen to me. That's right, come on. That God may give you. Oh, you got to, why, why don't you have, why don't you have? Because you don't ask. Isn't that what right. the Bible said? That's yeah. not the so he said, uh, we do the asking, and he does the showing up. Amen. And, and I could, I could, listen, you, you'll be fine. If you pray this, if you pray, you know, I, I would take it, keep, I'd keep praying. This one, it's not one, one time prayer. You keep praying. And watch stuff start shifting. Yes. Amen. He said, I pray <coughs> that the Father will give you the Spirit. Of you know, what? Wisdom and revelation. And revelation. Wisdom and revelation. Wisdom, wisdom is taking knowledge and knowing what to do with it. That's right. Revelation is, is what, what it says. It's a revealing or something that's unknown. Amen. In the book of Revelation, the, the apoc apocalypse, yeah. which has been associated with the end of the world, yeah. Associated with everything negative, the word means revelation. Mm -hmm. The book is called the Revelation of Jesus Christ. Right. The book is not about the end times. Right. It's not about all this stuff, disaster. It's about the revelation of Jesus Christ. It is the revelation that if I, if all this stuff is even going to happen in the future, or right now, or already happened. I'm not going to argue where you are theologically, eschatologically. I tell you, the, 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 the whole point of the thing is, in the midst of all this garbage, Jesus is in the middle of it with you. Amen. Right. And nothing can conquer him. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Come on. Amen. 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 It's not a book about the bad stuff that's going to happen or going to set up. I don't, you know, you, you can't do nothing about it anyway. That's right. But what you can do is hook up with the guy, yeah. the man, yes. <laughs> that's overcome and triumph, Amen. that sits on the throne, yeah. and all the angels bow down and say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God. So that's what we're praying about. Show us this, Lord. Give us a spirit of revelation. Amen. Reveal Jesus to us. Yeah. Reveal Jesus to us. That's right. That's right. You ain't got to see him your eyes. That's right. I've seen him. You, you trust me. I've seen him. But I, I believed you before I ever saw him. That's Amen. right. That's right. The spirit of wisdom and revelation. No, be surprised if you pray this prayer, Jesus don't show up. <laughs> in the knowledge of him. In the knowledge of what? In the knowledge of him. What is that? What is that word? Give a glass of it. Make sure I know what I'm talking about. Epigenosco. Listen, it means the knowledge is it's the precise and correct knowledge. You know stuff that ain't right. How many of you know you know stuff that ain't right? That's right. Huh? Get off there. Hmm. I, I know some stuff, buddy. I know some stuff. I mean, I, well, you do know some stuff, but you ain't right. Amen. <laughs> this is the precise and correct knowledge. That's right. Amen. There's a lot of people who think they know stuff about Jesus. Mm -hmm. But they don't know. That's right. Information is not reformation. <laughs> 
That's right. Jesus has got a way, listen, he's got a way when he's arrived you. He rubs off on you. Amen. It transforms you. That's why Paul was usually encouraging you. You know, she, you need to read your Bible. Jesus is the Word. Amen. You can, you can, you can have a, a supernatural encounter with the Bible in the Bible. It's just like a portal. The Bible is a portal into the realm of the Spirit. Amen. You don't read it for you not read it for information. That's right. Somebody said, I heard somebody say this word. You don't read the Bible for information, you read it for inspiration. Yeah. What inspires you? What encourages you? What yeah. lets you? It's a prophetic book. Yeah. It might take it too long. Uh, it, it, it uplifts you. Yeah. I don't care. I, I've, got, I've, got, I've got an old man Bible in the bathroom. It's that thick. It's, a, it's the ultra giant print. I finally found one of them. Oh, because I, 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 I spent my whole life just in front of a computer. You know, not playing games, is it? So I can, it, it, I don't, and if I put a pair of, of glasses in the bathroom, somebody's going to move them. <laughs> so I said, I'll fix this. I'll get the biggest Bible. Cause I, go, I don't use an iPad. I can make the letters big with it. But when I don't have an iPad to make it, I can reach that big Bible. But it's, it's about that thick. And I have it exactly. It, it's about that thick. And I can reach for it, and I can open it up, and I can still squint, and I can read it. And I'll just, I'll just open it up. I'm trying. i just open the rascal up and read something. It may be from the Old Testament, some obscure something. And by God, I can meet God in the bathroom. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Amen. 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 <laughs> this stuff is, is like a virus. It gets off on you if you if you if you if you become susceptible. If you haven't developed your spiritual immune system enough to repel any 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 of this Holy Ghost virus to right. spread about, you've developed your your religious immune system where you're immune from God. Mm -hmm. Immune from him talking to you and speaking to you and healing you and all this. Get vaccinated. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. Take your booster. Building yourself up a part of your most holy faith. Amen. Pray in the Spirit. All right, then the, not having the eyes of your heart to enlighten, then what's it going to do? It's going to enlighten. It's going to turn on a light in your, in your, in your spirit. Because yeah. yeah. that's what your heart is, it's your spirit. I got to <laughs> That you might know. What do you, what do you, all right, first thing we start talking about, what's the first thing you want you to know? Or the hope to which he's called you. Amen. He's called you. To, he, he's called, God has called you to a hope. Amen. That's right. Yes, yes. A confident expectation of the manifest presence. Yes, yes. He's called you to the glory. Yes. His, his glory. Yeah. He's Amen. called you. It says right there. He's called you. What are that he has called you to? What he says it right there. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? In the saints. Now that's hard for you, us to identify a lot of times. We think. If you've been raised in a Catholic background, you think a saint, you know, to qualify to be a saint in the Catholic Church, you have to have so many miracles performed. They have to confirm these miracles performed. And whatever they count, and then the Pope canonizes you and declares you're a saint. Mm -hmm. But according to the Word of God, yeah. as soon as you receive Christ, receive Jesus, you are separated. Amen. Right. That's right. And that means you're a saint. That's right. Paul, you look at the letters of Paul, he always says, I'll speak to the church and so and so, to all the saints. Mm -hmm. He wasn't talking about St. Anthony and St. Uh, whatever we're saying. I'm not making, these people, if you go back and read the history of these people, they canonized as saints. They were, you know what they were? They were just real Christians. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> They were so unusual. It's been so unusual the last 2,000 years in the church for somebody to really operate 
like this most do, they were the dead, they, they made them something special. That's right. And you pray to them. We're gonna wake, we're gonna wake uh, Marina. She prayed for somebody at Walmart. If he got better, and we're gonna, we're gonna have a uh, coronation, saint coronation. <laughs> saint. I didn't put it down. She's already saint. Amen. You're That's a saint. Right. You're right. a saint. That's right. You separate. It, the word saint means Haggai. Hey, hey, he got something to do with Haggai. Hey, it, it, it means to, to be separated. Well, I read you that prophecy last week. God said, "I'll separate." You. For the world, I'm separated. It, it is not based on. It is not based on. No, no, I'm not trying to discourage you to be a, a good person. That's right. Doing the right thing. That's right. But how's that work out anyway? But no, I'm not encouraging you to, to go out and just intentionally do stuff. But I'll tell you right now, God is. You don't realize in the spirit realm. Go up, you, up, look down, look at you in the spirit. You got a mark on you. Amen. It's not the mark of the beast. Amen. He sealed you. With the, he sealed you with the Holy Spirit. Sure. I mean, to, and that word "sealed." I mean, it, it, literally, if you look at the word, it means he put a stamp on you. I mean, you can you can go you can ever ever got that really good meat, you know this. Prime number one, you know, they got a stamp on it. USD. You prime. Well, you know what? You can leave that stuff out in the sun long enough, it'll rot and be stinky. That's right. right. But still, as far as as far as the government's concerned, it's prime. Amen. Mm -hmm. So some of y'all stink. Now I'm not talking about physically, but you still got the stamp on it. Amen. Amen. Don't get offended, man. I stay too. Sometimes I stay. You guys know why. Sometimes I just stay. You're a stinker. Huh? But you still got the seal on you. Amen. That means you have to put the seal on you as responsible. That's right. That's right. Tell them what the resurrection is. Amen. Takes a bunch of rotted meat and raises it up. I'm getting off. Praise God. I, was, I put this up here for a reason. You know, and I'll get to it. <coughs> what are the riches of his glory? Listen to that. We'll just stay right there. What does that mean? There's, he says there are riches. He says we are we are his inheritance. We're, we're the riches of his glory. Or in us. The riches of his glory is in us. All right, let me take you one back. I, I will. I'll, I'll come to me real quick. I know you're your time. All right. Let me see you. John, let me turn you off. You, you're familiar with this? Yeah. Which I just want to make it real simple, okay? Simple as I can do. He said, this is Jesus talking to John 14. He says, he said, do not let your heart be troubled. Now that's right there. That's a command of Jesus. Right there. You ain't doing it right by being troubled. Do not let your heart be troubled. He said, believe in God. Trust in, rely upon. That's what belief means. Just trust it. In God, talk about the Father, Yahweh. He said, and believe also in me. Amen. This is what we're getting to. He said, in my Father's house, Father's house, are many dwelling places. Now, what, what, what do you think? Traditionally, it's been, we know, when we die, we all get to heaven. You know, we're going to have a you know a mansion in heaven because this king just says mansion. Don't fall asleep. <laughs> it says mansion. What are you left for? You got a pants on this? If I get him to laugh, man, I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is in this house. Praise <laughs> the Lord. <laughs> you know, you think you look at the, you, I'm not trying to burst your bubble about your your mansion in heaven. And then, and then you get real religious, you know. Well, I don't want that. I'm mentioning it, but I just give you a little a cabin. Oh, you you know, go over there. You, you full of pride, religious jerk. <laughs> you're dead. You know. And he ain't talking about that. That's right. He said, in my father's house, Okios, or household. 
This thing, uh, I looked at, I saw a respect thing with the Roth, you know the Rothschild's supposed to be the richest family in, in the world. We all know they're out there. They eat babies and all that stuff. But they got, they're, they're value, their family value is in the trillions. Yeah. Not billions, but trillions. Yeah. They have got, let me just like, I don't know, you, you, you all let me, you, let me slide. You know, I'm an old man, you know, I, I can't remember precisely. But I think they've got like 21, and they showed pictures of a, uh, these houses they got. <sighs> they look like the Palace of Versailles, you know. It's in, the, in their house, the, in their household, the Rothschild household. They have the, all these mansions. They were trying to get a party with he's, Jesus is talking about in my father's household. There are many dwelling places. Yes, amen. Now look, they, they look at it. Get, uh, get your whiteboard. Look, let's just say if you can do it. This right here is, is the father's. Fathers, who's the father? Yahweh. Mm -hmm. yeah. Father Yahweh. This is his house. Household. Household, yeah. What's that? That means, that's his holdings. That's what he, he said. In my father's household, there are many dwelling places. There's Ivan, there's Chrissy, there's Christy, but I think she's been teaching some school. Oh, here it is. Dick, Dick's over here. Here, Dick. I might keep eating Dick. Okay. Uh, there's Gloria. There's Pamela. There's Stevie. Here's Brickety. Get in there. He might put you right here. He's not happy with it, right? I can't help you. I'm sorry. I'm trying to be good. I can't help you. No, I'll tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to pretend I'm God. It will put you right there. There you go. <laughs> All right, that's what he did. Mm -hmm. you know, some of you in here, I'd put you there. Goodness gracious. I'm a bad man. <laughs> I'm saved, praise God. Amen. But Jesus came. He didn't come to save us righteous, but to receive it. That's right. <laughs> come on. So, uh, so listen, just, I'll get this in your head. Never let it be. You got to get further brother revelation. I ain't say that, but this is a, this is what Jesus said. He said, "My Father's house, household, there are many dwelling places." Mm -hmm. We're all in Him. We're in Him, mm -hmm. yes. and He's enough. Did Jesus say it? He said, uh -huh. yep. "He said, I'll be, he said, I'll be in you, and you'll be in me. Amen. I'll be in the Father, and the Father's in me." That's right. So then, here is God's dwelling. His dwelling place is a mansion in heaven. His dwelling place is a mansion here on earth. That's right. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Paul said this. He said this. He said, talking about the, the Corinthians were doing all kinds of flaky stuff. He said, don't you know that you're the temple of the Holy Spirit? That's right. Amen. He would put them down. He said, don't you can wake up. Sin is always a sin is always a result of misidentity. Amen. You don't act like who you are. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Most of you do know you're human, don't you? Mm -hmm. So I, I will. I will probably won't see y'all out there running up that tree looking for nuts, <laughs> huh? <laughs> now, if you identify as a squirrel, <laughs> you, you might. <laughs> If I see you out there looking up, climbing up a tree, that's a, that's a cypress tree, so you ain't gonna find any nuts you eat them. That's right. But you understand, it's, your identity prevents you from doing certain things. That's right. Yeah. Yes. That's right. Yes. Yes. Where do you get your identity from? Your daddy. That's right. <laughs> I'm talking about your physical, your, your physical father. Amen. I'm talking about in my father's house. Where do you get a clue to what, what Daddy says? You get it in here, in the, in the book, in the book you wrote. Are y'all out there? Amen. Amen. What you identify? The, the, the whole deal, the whole deal right now, you, you know I know this stuff, I'm just telling you. The whole deal, this is the most prophetic generation that's ever been in existence. But, it, but it's, it's mostly in a negative light. Mm-hmm. 
You'll be prophesied, young people, especially, are being prophesied to every day. You think a prophecy has to come from somebody that's in the ministry that stands up here? A prophecy is something, is a word that changes your life. That's right. That's right. That's right. And I'm telling you, there are words being spoken right now that change people's lives. Yeah, that's right. And I'm not talking about it for the good. That's, that's right. right. That's right. If, you te if you're told to question your gender, and don't you understand, I have no problem. Now, how do I say this when I get into trouble? I, I'm, I'm kind of like God. I'm really a, a lot like God, because you are too. I don't really want to judge people on, on their problem. Right. Amen. I'm not saying I agree with them, but I'm sure if you looked at me, you could probably see a lot of stuff you wouldn't agree about me. You understand? You understand. Amen. But I hope you love me. Amen. Because without your love, I'm never going to change. Sure. And I'm talking about agape love. I'm mm -hmm. talking about ooey gooey. That's right. Huggy woggy. You don't have to like me. Just love me. Do you understand? Okay. God kind of love you. Yeah. Agape. Yeah. Yes. You've been accepted. You've been, yes, no scripture is. It says you've been made. Peter says you've been, you have been made, made, accepted, and in, in. the beloved. Amen. Amen. So you're in Christ. He's the beloved. Yes. You tell you have problems with rejection. We we talk rejection or spirit, poverty spirit, whatever. It's all wasted out. Y'all listen. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna finish. And this is what God's come to do. Jesus said, "Let me skip that. Let me give you just a little more good news. Can you stand and hand any more good news?" Amen. Now, see, this is a problem with this. He's a big eye pain. You don't know what stuff is. Shoot. How many of you have trust me enough to know? <laughs> if God just tell it to you. You remember Jesus said, Where is it at? It says, But Jesus said, I'll not leave you alone. It's in here. It's right up in here if I get it. You understand the scripture? Yeah. Jesus said, I'll not leave you orphans. I will not leave you orphans. This is the last thing I'll talk to you about. I will not leave you orphans. That's right. Yeah. Huh? I will not leave you orphans. Now listen to what I think. This is a revelation. I thought, you know, I, this, I taught it a couple of weeks ago. I said, I thought if Jesus, they're so close to Jesus, he's, he's telling them he's, he's getting ready to go away. He's got to die. Y'all listen? Yeah. Get ready to die. That he's, they're getting freaked out. So he says, listen, I'm not going to leave you orphans. I'm, I'm not going to leave you on your own. But he, he goes and says to the pastor, he says, I'm going to give you another savior. That's right. That, that's where people get all messed up. The work there is that there might be someone who will take care of you, deliver you. It's more than what that provides. Listen. But this was this is our this is my not be on it. You can question you want to. Jesus is saying, listen. He said, listen, I'm not gonna leave you an orphan. He's not saying that because I'm going to I'm gonna leave you physically that you're gonna become orphans and you're scared of being orphans. You already are an orphan. I'm not going to leave you an orphan. Right. Y'all didn't get that, did you? Yeah. Amen. You was already an orphan. That's right. It, you didn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't when Jesus came, all of a sudden you're not an orphan anymore, and he's leaving now, you're going to become an orphan again, he's trying to reassure you. He said, I will not leave you an orphan. The whole human race is an orphan. That's right. Right. Verse 18? Yeah. A four, chapter uh, 14? Yes. Thank you. See, this what's this? I'm about to talk me around my regular Bible story. I will not leave you. And to say that's why I listen to as orphans. So maybe I'm wrong. I don't think so. 
He said, I will not leave. Jesus is making a promise. He said, I'm not going to leave anyone an orphan. Sure. Now, unless you've been an orphan, you would know. But the, the fact is, a whole human race is orphan. They lost. I'm not saying they were abandoned by their father God, but they, they that's the way they sent. They, the shame, the guilt that came on them at the fall. They they took on an orphan spirit. Y'all out there? Mm -hmm. yep. They toiled. They had to live by the toil. Gee, we got Yahweh said told him, see, he would you know, what we call the curse. He was not punishing it. He said, This is just the way it is. Because you you you've got the outside of this tree of life that I set there before you got in the tree of dollars getting evil. He said, You're gonna to toil. You gotta to live by the sweat of your brow. You gotta work hard and bring forth thistles. Do you understand this? He said, say it's not God, we always think it's God just he's cursing them. No, they were already cursed. Their disobedience brought a curse on them. They did it, God didn't do it to them. They did it to themselves. Are you out there? Yes. And Jesus is saying, listen, no, they're all freaked out because this is the first taste of any kind of relationship with God that, that humanity's had, really, when Jesus came up to the earth and had these disciples and he hung out with them for three and a half years, they have a taste of what it's like to be in fellowship with God. This is more than just the priest going in once a year into the Holy of Holies and, and seeing the Shekinah, or even prophets being caught up into the heavenly visions. That only happened. That didn't happen every day and day. I don't know what people think about prophets that they just live continually in this realm of this world. It just happens every once in a while. But here they've been living with the man, eating yeah. with him. They had fellowship with God. Mm -hmm. They got a taste of what it's like, what it's supposed to be like. Yeah. And they, he said, he, they don't understand. He, he said, I got to go to the cross. I've got to die. But it's better for you than I do. Because if I can't, I can't send the Holy Spirit back to live in you. That's right. 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 I'm not going to leave you in the condition you're in. That's right. Do you understand the difference between this and I, I'm not very smart. So I don't, do you understand? He didn't say, I'm, going, I'm not going to leave. Like I tell him, say, I'm not going to leave you at all. You know, that means I'm going away and I'm coming back. I'm not saying that. I'm, saying, I'm not going to leave you in the state you're in. Right. Amen. Right. I'm going to go to the cross. I'm going to, I'm going to buy you back. Yes. Amen. 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 I'm going to pay your debt. Amen. And I'm going to pay the debt to those that are indebted to you. So you ain't got no reason to hate them anymore. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's why you love your enemies. Because in the eyes of God, their debt, whatever they did to you, has been paid for. Amen. Amen. Isn't it wise? Praise God. If you look at it in the spirit, I can't have an enemy. Why do you have an enemy? They did something to you. Jesus took care of what they did to you. Amen. Amen. Wow. That's why Paul said to the Corinthians, he said, he said, no longer, he said, I no longer see any person after the flesh. That's right. Wow. Praise God. If I look at you, if you if you've done something, but if you did something, but if you ever did something, but I'm talking to natural. Every time I look at you, I'm going to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ain't that right? Mm -hmm. Try. Huh? <laughs> yeah. But if I, look at, if I look at him, I won't pick on you. Who can I pick on him? I don't want, you can take it. Yeah. If I look at him and I see, and I've got in my mind what Jesus did for me and for him. Yeah. Now I look at him and I say, you know what? Whatever he owed me, Jesus has paid for. Yes. Yes. He, now he's not responsible to pay me back. That's right. I don't, I'm not waiting for him to, him to, he may never change. Or what you're talking about. But, but God will get that debt that, that's owed me back to me somehow. That's right. It may come through something else. Somebody else more likely will. That's right. Are y'all out there? Yeah. It's the same thing when they're looking at you. you you've done, we've all done stuff to each other. 
right. If you have a, if you spent over five minutes with somebody, yeah. you you probably done something that offended them, uh -huh. yeah. or think that they owe you, or you, or you think they owe you something or whatever. You don't know. Are y'all getting it? Yeah. It's just simple. You learn how to live this way, which yeah, I don't know. That's hard. <laughs> It's been a whole change, life changes life. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying, uh, don't get me, uh, y'all know me. I ain't got there yet. I'm getting there. Yep, we're going to get there. I believe we all get there. Amen. 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 Praise God. Okay. Didn't go for 10 minutes. Old. Let's, let's have to read. Why do we do this every Sunday? It is some kind of room. Religious thing. No, it's not a religious thing. <coughs> what do we do? What other things do we do every Sunday? We, we worship God. Yeah. Cor corporate. Not that we don't worship Him, you know, at home. Do we do that? Don't we do that? Yeah. We, it's here. We sure we sure gonna take up an offering because I'm a preacher. Amen. We do that every Sunday. That's not a religious ritual. No, let's give you the opportunity to thank you, sir. Give you an opportunity to, to um, give. We, we, we share the word. Amen. You know why we do this? Well, Jesus said, do, He said, do it as often as you will. And so I will it. So I want to do it. I'm sure you do too. Amen. Because you, when you do this, you do this in remember. I'm moving around too much. What are you doing? It? This is intentionally. You're doing it to remember what Jesus has done. Right. Humanity has a real case of amnesia. Sure. If you if you don't take you don't take about about two weeks to forget something. You ever notice the longer you stay away from something that you thought you really loved at one time, the longer you stay away from it, the less. I don't know about that, but absence makes the heart, if absence makes the heart grow fonder, then I, I've got a lot of people that used to come to church here that really love me. Praise God. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're absent. <laughs> <laughs> you can't laugh at you, you have to cry. Very good. <clears throat> That's why you have to discipline, I see. This is not lead, this is not for righteousness' sake, but it will lead to righteousness. You put yourself under the law. Okay. You say, "I'm going to let you be redeemed from the curse of the law." Yeah, you've been redeemed from the curse. That's why you can, you can let the law come into your life. That's right. Because it can't kill you anymore. Amen. What am I saying now? You put yourself. You see an area of your life. What's the law for? The law's for the lawless. That's right. That's right. If you've got an area of lawlessness or iniquity in your life, that's right. Come on. You put yourself under the law, what God says about it, and then you come up and it'll bring you into such conviction, you'll know, say, I can't help it. I, I need help. Mm -hmm. uh, he said, This is right what I was waiting for. That's what I like. no. <laughs> because until you really realize you need help, you can't get no help. That's right. That's what it is. You got that? Yeah. So you put yourself part of the law. Yeah, y'all probably misunderstand what I said about it. I'm not saying you gotta go back and talk to the Jewish mosaic law, but uh, it's a discipline. Amen. Amen. <laughs> if you're if you're overweight. You, the things that cause you to be overweight, you need to put yourself under a law and stop. No more sugar. Now, the, how long is that going to last? Until the grace takes over. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, keep, you keep going back to the sugar bowl until the grace takes over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but grace will take over. Amen. Amen. Right. Do, it, do it for you, but you can't do it. Do it for yourself. But until you realize you can't do it for yourself, you'll never receive grace. Amen. Right. Thank you. Thank you. As long as anything you think you can do, you don't need God. That's right. That's good stuff, man. That's good stuff.
good word right there. That, that is a good word. You rocked it there. <laughs> it is a good word. I mean, that's it's, yeah. it's the, the truth. word. Yeah, yeah it's the truth. truth. Is that the Bible? <laughs> So we're going to do we're, we're going to do this. Yeah, yeah. It is in power. Grace is in power. Grace is not God overlooking your stuff. Like, you know, I'm just going to look like that didn't happen. It's like, he says, no, I see what's happening. I'm going to do something about it. And it's not punishing. It's delivering. Amen. Amen. Now, there's plenty of other preachers that can, can beat you on the head with much stuff. So I don't. I feel safe in my job. Make you feel good about God. There's plenty of people out there that, that their job is, is to make you feel like God hates you. That's right. So I don't feel like I've, I've stepped out of bounds by being uh, unusual mm -hmm. and tell you God loves you. And that, he, that he's for you, he's not against you. Oh, you just let them slimy sinners slip in your face. God's good, amen. 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 So the Lord said, the Lord is good. The Lord is good. His mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. His mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever. Let's say it to yourself. The Lord's good to me. The Lord's good to me. His mercy. His mercy. Towards me. Towards me. Endures forever. Endures forever. Do you believe it? I believe it. Yes. 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 You can be challenged. I'll prophesy over you right now. So you walk out the door. Let this stick in your mind. You're going to do something goofy. That's right. <laughs> I hate to say it. I'm not speaking it over you. I just know. <laughs> it's going to happen to me. But thank God for grace. Amen. 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 Yeah, everybody said, man, that guy really is a prophet. Well, I pray for the grace. Listen, we pray for the grace of God that it don't happen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. That the goodness of God will overtake you. Yes. yes. Right. Amen. Goodness and mercy will overtake you. Amen. 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 Run you down. Chase you down. Yes. Amen. That's every spot you think. God chased him down and married him every day. <laughs> Chase you down and overcome. <laughs> I believe. Amen. Yeah. Ready? So, so on the night the Lord was betrayed, Jesus was betrayed. He said, listen, this is my body. Yes, thank you. He said, take it easy. This is my body. And I'm giving it for you. Yes. I'm giving it for you. He said, I want you to take it and eat it. Get it inside of you. Amen. That you are. The, say, I am the body of Christ. I am the body of Christ. Amen. 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 Remember, it's individual, but you're the body of Christ. Amen. So if God's going to do anything on the earth, Guess who he's going to use? Me. You. Say he's going to use me. Me. Regardless of my condition. Regardless of my condition. Amen. 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 Isn't that something? Amen. Amen. So people say, well, that's just, he's just talking about a few, that's just special people. No. Y'all are all special. Amen. Amen. All that's right. Y'all all ride the special bus. That's right. <laughs> Y'all want the special bus with me. <laughs> Short book. Short book. It's parking my house. It's all right. As long as God's using me, I don't care if I'm writing short book. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So you're not disqualified. Amen. That's right. Amen. 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 Praise God. Yeah. Ah! All right, take it easy. You're waiting for it. Thank you, Father. There's bound to be people that watch this and think, these people are all here. <laughs> Hmm. I thank you for blood covered, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And then after, after that eating, you took the cup and said, this is the blood. This is my blood. The blood of the new cup. This is the new cup in my blood. Yes. Yeah. Amen. You know, do you deal with um, God, me and Daddy are making with you. That's right there. I can remember I live out here. This is a new deal. Yes. I'm going to die, I'm going to die to release it. 
Amen. Amen. Thank you. So we, we honor the king. He let me still read. I'll put, he was put here, what is he called? He said, I'll put my laws in your mind That's and right. I'll write them on your heart. Mm -hmm. He said, I will be their God. Say, my God. My, my God. God. And they shall be my people. That's right. They, your people. My people. they shall not teach every, everyone their fellow citizens. We're all citizens of the kingdom of God. That's right. <clears throat> and everyone his brother saying, know the Lord. Yes. That's right. Why? For all, 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 say all, all, will know the Lord, from the greatest to the smallest. That's right. Huh? He so said, "For what? Why? Why would God know us? Know us? Because He He will be merciful to our iniquities. And what's He then said? And He will remember their sin, my sins, no more. Amen. That's the new covenant. Do you understand it? That's what he said. I'm going to die and make this thing happen. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to come back from the dead and make sure it happens. That's right. That's right. Amen. 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 To the king. To the king. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Anybody, if anyone, listen, if anyone needs prayer, after the service, just stay up here. Just come up. God, kids, try to be not rowdy and stuff. If there's people up here get break, and we'll break. We don't have. I don't have a prayer line anymore. Let's the Lord lead me to. Yeah. But that doesn't mean we won't pray for you. It, it, either me or Pamela or Henry or Ivan or 